two, one. All right, folks, welcome back to the Be The Bright podcast presented by Red Supply. My name is Matt Hawkins. This is Arsenal's Jordan Spoon, and we're here with our special guest all the way from Mallorca. It's a tiny little island. Is it off the coast of Spain? Is that correct? Yeah, just, just so off, uh, Bar- off Barcelona. Okay. Just in the and middle this, of the Mediterranean. This is Otley. 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 And it's a tricky one. I know. I know. I was going to mess. I knew I was going to mess it up because that's what I do. It's fine. It's fine. It's Americans. Uh, Just stick to Quincy. I think you can like yeah, sing the Quincy. theme tune to that. I'm going to go with Quince <laughs> Keen- because because you're in Mallorca and that's just that's how I that's what I think it is. So, um, but welcome. We, we really appreciate you being here. You've been a a a part of this our our little story since 2017, um, and that is also when you opened up your 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 store there in and uh, guide service in Mallorca. So tell it, tell us what it is you do and where you're, where you're at and give us your, you know, you just want an Oscar. Tell us how they're going to interview. <laughs> I want to thank my mom. Um, I'm not religious. So I'd like to fa- thank the cat God. And Oh no, no. Anyway, no, basically uh, back in, you're right. Back in 2017, I opened a little shop here in, uh, in Mallorca in Spain, in the Balearic Islands. Um, it's called OQ Service Course. So OQ, my name's Ottilie Quince. So it is a tricky one to pronounce. My mum and dad obviously hated me. <laughs> um, no, seriously, I was named after a jazz singer and it's uh, you can't get told off at school because everybody knows <laughs> it's you. Um, no, I opened a little shop basically that had um, a service course for riders, not necessarily for their bikes. So I'm a physiotherapist. I worked in professional soccer for three years uh, back in the UK. Um, and we all know that soccer players, um, sorry to every single soccer player it's I know. football, yeah. Mm-hmm. Football, yeah. Um, every single football player I know are not as tough as cyclists. Um, so basically, I wanted to support riders here in Mallorca. So um, if they kind of, here we say they have Mallorca fever, they, they come here, they arrive, and they want to ride every single day, like like full blast, full gas every day. And so basically I can then do physiotherapy, sports massage and keep them on the bike. Um, It's a contagious uh, thing as well. You know, all the riders come here and they talk about like cycling and they ride even more and then they get on the big germ box plane, go home and want to come back. It's kind of really, really addictive. So by creating a shop, um, I was able to have like really cool brands and niche brands as well, because here in Mallorca and probably most shops in Spain, um, they all have the same kind of products. So you yeah. go into the shops and it's like identikit, you know, the same brands, the same things. And, yeah. and I, don't, I don't want that. I don't look like anyone else. I probably don't act like anyone else. So why have my shop? I want my shop to reflect what I like and, and who I want to invest my time, effort and money in. Uh, hence why, so we got the Ridge Supply. So basically I was, um, I was introduced to you guys uh, by the Aspen Cycling Tours guys. So uh, by Ian and Justin over there in uh, Colorado. And I love the story and I love the socks and yeah, kind of brought them over. Um, and we have this common thread, we keep bringing it up, but you you actually, um, you hosted and rode with John and Pamela Robichar back in 2000, right when you first opened up. Mate, then, how cool are they by the way? I know, and then they came, they they had, they had they were on their trip, their roaming robos trip. They flew over there, they, they visited you know, Mallorca, and then they, they came back and they got back in their van. And when they got back down, when they came to visit me, who I'd, I'd never met them in person, but when they came to visit me, they stayed, they, they didn't stay at our house. They parked their van in my, my driveway, but they were here for a couple of days <laughs> and we rode and they told, they were like, you've got to go to Mallorca. You've got to, oh, you've got to go visit here. Yeah. And that's how, that's how I got to know who you were. And so um, basically John and Pamela both, uh, they gave me a pair of their own rich supply socks with their yeah. own kind of, uh, the Roman, r- 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 that Roman Robos. That's a, that's a mouthful for anyone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they were my very first pair of Ridge Supply socks, and yeah, it kind of encouraged me then to go with like really niche products, and that's what I have in my shop. So I also do guiding here. So you briefly said I guide people from all over the world, and people say, "Oh, I don't need a guide. It's an island. You know, there's water one side and mountains yeah. the other side." But sure, you, you don't need a guide. But actually, if you're limited on time and we all know now particularly in today today's society uh time is the sort of most valuable uh commodity we can have so why waste your time going on main roads when you can actually pick up the small caminos that are really beautiful go to the best coffee shops and that's pretty much what i do um and if people because people say to me 
oh, hey, Otty, I've, I've Googled you and I've looked on Strava and I can't find you. I went, nah, because I'm not on there. Yeah. Why would I, as a guiding business, why would I want to give away my tricks of the trade on Strava? Right. You know, pay me and I'll take you on an amazing <laughs> ride. Uh, and I'll, I'll break you and then I can fix you in the physiotherapy side of things. So it's <laughs> kind of like a good business model. Yeah. Well, I, I love it. And it's like, um, I realized too, that there's just the amount of people, the amount of high level teams and stuff that come there and train and, and people that go there, the riding looks like fake, you know? Yeah, um, it really does. I mean, it's insane. Yeah. And, and so I, I can imagine that you'd have no shortage of, of routes or, or, you know, experiences to show people. And, um, I remember yeah. watching, watching you all during the, um, during your lockdown when you could only ride a certain, certain distance too, you know, like well, that was a crazy in, in time. Lo- yeah. In the lockdown we had, I think it was eight and a half weeks of not allowed out of the house. Um, so we weren't allowed to ride it anywhere. Um, luckily I had rollers and a turbo. So I became like the most popular person in my area. Um, no one's ever said that before ever. Um, but you're only allowed out to go to like the pharmacy, the bank or the supermarket. But for me, cause I'm high risk, uh, because of health issues. Um, I actually didn't leave the house only once to go to the hospital and once to check on my shop. Um, other than that, I had like friends, one, one of my friends, he's from uh, Uruguay. He did my shopping. Um, and the rest of the time, I was just on my, my turbo on the balcony, on the terrace or up on the rooftop. Um, and yeah, just trying to get as fit and as strong as I can. And then I think it was after nine weeks, uh, we were allowed to, ro- to, to exercise either six till 10 in the morning or eight to 11 at night. And in the evening, it was too dark. I mean, you, yeah. you have like one and a yeah. half hours, but you had to stay within your municipality. So like within your county. Luckily, the county I live in, I live in the county of Poyenta, which is like the northeast of Mallorca. And it's quite a big one. We have the lighthouse ride to Fomentor. Now, if anyone's been here, it's, I, f- I know I'm not on Strava, but apparently it's, it's ranked, I think, something like the second or third most ridden ride in the world on Strava. Yeah. And so wow. it's like from he- here in Porto Poyenta, it's, I think it's like 42 kilometres. So what's that, miles? 20 yeah, 20. Miles, yeah, mm-hmm. Something yeah. like that, there, there and back with a 1,000 metres of climbing. <clears throat> So like three and a half thousand feet of climbing and it's got everything. It's got a scary ass tunnel. It's got goats. It's got amazing scenery. It's got a massive lighthouse. It's got coffee. It's pretty much got everything. And so we're allowed to do that. And the the beauty of it was no one else was there. Literally like a handful of friends riding on this like ghost area. Um, And we had all the, like I say, all the little lanes to ride on. And then one of the mountains that goes up into the Tramontana mountains. So it's the main mountain range. Um, called the Col de Familia, we were allowed up to the Welcome to Poyenta sign. So it was good to do some like, efforts up there and coming from the turbo, we didn't care where we rode. It was just nice to be outside, <laughs> yeah. you yeah. know. But we were only allowed to ride in one, like just one of us. We weren't allowed to ride in groups. So we all conveniently met at my friend's coffee shop here in the port and like stayed a good distance and drank our café con leches and cortados, which That's is really awesome. cool. Yeah, we, we had a very similar experience. We were um, yeah. We were stuck on Zwift and, and riding together, which was kind of nice. Cause you could at least suffer. We, and we get on, uh, get on audio together so we could yeah. commiserate while we were doing things. <laughs> um, and then once we started to get back out, I mean, even, even still six months later, I'm not really riding with other people. Um, I kind of have my COVID riding buddies that we keep in track, you know, we keep track like, of each other. Like lick each other a lot. Well, so you, no, you're just like, like or... <laughs> at least if we, <laughs> if, we <laughs> if we got somebody got sick, we would be in communication and there's the only, yeah. we're the only people we've ridden with. So that's been, that's been the new norm, but uh, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a crazy time. Well, I mean, I, 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 I say that your business is like, it seems like it's a dream, you know, like, was this like a dream that you had and you were like, I'm going to go do it. Um, Cause it's, I mean, is- you, cr- if you crushed involves it. You... Getting... Go on, sorry. No, I was just saying, like, it. Did you just pack up and move, and and just and you're just like, I'm gonna go to Mallorca and live. Like, how did how did that decision? Uh, well, happen? I was gonna say, if, dream, if dreaming is um, having a really bad divorce and <laughs> moving countries, that's the dream. No, seriously, <laughs> um, I did. I got divorced uh, from my wonderful ex-husband. Oh, I don't like him, and I can't swear, so <laughs> we'll keep we'll, we'll keep it at that. Yeah, um, beep beep. 
you can imagine old potty mouth. Um, and basically, I think it was like three three years later, I decided that I want I, I'd lost my house and things in a divorce, and it yeah. was it was really messy. And I thought I'd love to own another house again. And I looked in my local area, and I live I'm from just north of London, a place called Luton. So it's and- cheap, really cheap, yeah. It's not cheap at all. <laughs> and we're on the edge of the Bedfordshire, Hertfordshire border, which is beautiful countryside. You're in the Chilterns and the ride in there is magnificent. And I, I looked around and I, I couldn't find anything like reasonably priced because everything is super expensive. Yeah. And I just thought, I was going to swear then. I controlled yeah, it. It's okay. I just thought, okay. I'm going to move. You're doing great. Order. You're doing I'm so doing good. really good. <laughs> I'm just thinking what is, is is deemed as a swear word in England and in America. And I think, yeah, none of them in America are allowed. Anyway, so I decided to pack up and uh, basically fill my soccer mum car with as many tea bags as I could. Yeah. Four bikes, two cats and my dad. And he was like co-driver. And yeah, we drove down. And I think it was a year into living here. I was doing my physiotherapy work from home and going to people and I kind of thought, I don't want people to think I'm just another, what they call giri here, like a foreigner. There's a lot yeah. of foreigners, a lot yeah. of people, expats from all over the world here, which makes it amazing. But I don't want to be another person like that who's just basically here, but not kind of committing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I speak to a few friends of mine and I said, I really want to get like a little shop, a little hub where all year round people know they can come here to ride. And if they want to come for a coffee or just come for a bit of a chat or, you know, a bit of a chin wag, then they can. And so, yeah, I kind of just thought, yeah, let's go for it. Um, and it was, yeah, it was sort of February 2017 and opened a shop. And people, I love it. You, you probably get this as well, Matt, is people say, oh, aren't you lucky? And you're like, yeah, well, I'm not really sure what, what more lucky I can get, you know, <laughs> divorce, cancer, <laughs> transplant, blah, blah, all these things. But actually, you create your own luck and the harder you work, the lucky you become yeah. Um, and, and, and you've so, done, you've done such an awesome job though, like, um, creating a life and now I'm just, so I'm talking about from my view, from all the way across the, the pond and seeing it though, like you've done such a great job creating a life where, where you're, you seem to be doing something you love. And we've talked about that with some other people. And, and yeah. that's my big advice is like, it's not always easy. You don't always get rich. It isn't, oh, it, it work. Yeah. It's every day it's work. There's worry, there's stress and all that. But you do this thing where you go ride in the morning and you'll do your, your, um, your, your morning smile. I don't morning. know what you call that. <laughs> hey, my, my, my crazy uh, high, you know, we, <laughs> we love that because we're, we're waking up all like, blurry eyed haven't had our coffee yet and you're already crushing the day you're you're six hours ahead of us and we see that stuff on social media it's huge and you don't see probably don't get that feedback yeah. but like no i don't no it's awesome and so and and of course there you are like on some beautiful climb and the sun's <laughs> up and you know or you're you're riding along the beach and like i mean it's awesome. Like, so, so don't, don't get stuck in the mire of the yuck of it and not realize like it, oh, no, it's inspiring. Sure. I mean, We're inspired even, by you for sure. Even now, even now the sun's getting my eyes and in England, we don't have that. We don't have that big ball of fire in the sky. Um, and like it's October and you know, sun is shining, but no, I get a lot of, aren't you lucky? And like, maybe it's a British mentality, but a lot of people yeah. say that kind of thing, but actually I don't get paid very well. My outgoings are loads. I live on my own. Well, yeah. I've got Cav, Cav and Indy, my two cats. Um, they eat a lot. And, um, <laughs> you know, I, I'm surrounded by bikes. I think I've got like one, two, three, four, seven bikes here in my living room. But I love it. You know, I think I, I read uh, someone, an athlete, um, was I reading it? Or maybe it was on Netflix. They're my two forms of education at the moment. <laughs> um, someone said, you know, obviously about time. I oh, was it uh, passion over paycheck, which... I think could be one of my next tattoos because that's it. I've earned decent money as a teacher, okay money as a physiotherapist. Yeah. But actually, I know a lot of people who earn a lot of money, but if you don't have time to spend that, then what's the point of earning a lot of money? Yeah. And here, yeah. my, my commute is one kilometre, 1.1 kilometres, which isn't even a mile along the beach yeah. um, to my shop. And, you know, I've uh, got the Mediterranean Sea. Like, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty hard, you know. <laughs> Someone's got to do it, to be honest, yeah. Jordan. Yeah. Um, the, the Mediterranean Sea is 40 metres from my house. Um, and the people here are wonderful. So for me, I do reflect back and think, 
you know, I see my family more apart from obviously during a pandemic. Yeah. But they cut, I'm able to actually have quality time with friends and family, uh, show them this place. I get to meet people who all have the similar things in, in common in terms of cycling and a passion for riding. Um, and yeah, it, it kind of sifts through the people that, that mean a lot to you and the ones that don't really mean much at all. So for me, it's kind of like the litmus test, you know, you move yeah. to another country, you see who actually means a lot and yeah, it's just magnificent to be honest. That's awesome. Well, Otley, thank you for, for being here with us for this first episode. This is episode 40. We've done 40, 40 episodes in two weeks. 40. It's wow. crazy. Uh, we're gonna be mad. We're going to come right back with Otley and we're going to talk about bicycles and how amazing she is because she's an 11-time world champion. You didn't know this, but if you didn't, <laughs> uh, now you know, and we're going to come back and talk about it. Otley, thank you for being here. Thanks, Jordan. And we'll be back for episode 41.